just barely. He's gonna pre-nade into top kitchen and try and catch this player, but instead he catches him in the side with a VMP. That's two kills for Looney. Very well played. Allows Clash to come through for the trade on Apathy on that A bomb site. And that's gonna be the first round win for Rise Nation. I love the double nade there coming out of Looney. The second one goes up. He's able to bounce it off the roof, comes in, pre-aim as well, and just caught that player. Four team envious on the other side. Cleans up two in quick succession. And then the last one comes in and Rise Nation have another round on the board. And Octane starting this one 0-3, Slack 0-2. Let's we'll see what Octane starts out with here on this deep, on this offensive round. Yeah, danger close wild card there, giving Looney quite a bit of utility to check corners and decide what his play is going to be. Octane opening up on mid map here again. He hasn't had the most engagements. He's kind of often one of the last, like one of the fewer, or one of the last few players to be taken down. He hasn't had too much action on mid. Him and John have had very little activity there. And now Looney trying to work his way into mansion with an inmate in his hands. He's hoping to take someone off of a head glitch here, and he's just trying to carefully peek these corners. He knows J-Cap has to, he knows someone has to be nearby here. And hearing J-Cap firing right there has to be a sign. But J-Cap finding the kill and Slasher stopping Looney from going for the trade is going to be huge for the advantage of Envious. Now, Slack, I'm not 100% sure if Slasher saw him. But now it looks like both those players have noticed each other. Unfortunately, Octane Another finds need. the wrong side of a grenade. And the troubles continue on that side. And it's not necessarily anything wrong with his performance so far he's just been like the last one alive time and time again or you know like that the nade comes in that's a really hard thing to counter that sometimes because even with flak jacket you know it can be taken out but so far i would say although there hasn't been too much going for him you need a better performance right now you're only down by two rounds though so this game can still be saved on the other side though slash is starting this one five and one yeah, Slash just find, found himself two great needs so far. Both of them hitting Octane now that yep. I think about it. Uh, in and around Mansion. So him just being able to put those well-placed needs down and read that is impressive. Octane taking down Apathy and Classic, following up with a kill with, on Jom. J-Cap, though, is still in control of the bomb. And he's alongside Slasher. He's been performing the best so far for his team in terms of sheer fragging. Octane finds another one on Slasher. And now it's going to be a four versus one. J-Cap is in the back of his base. He's trapped and cornered. Classic comes through, puts a couple shots in his back, and Rise Nation finds their second round win. There we go. That's a very, that's a great round performance from them, right? They come out aggressive. They would pick up too early, then divide and conquer for those final two kills. Rise Nation working their way back into this one. Look at all of the perks on that class there. There was a lot. It was like fast hands, afterburner, black jacket, and then, of course, you have the dead silence. And... The blast suppressor rounding it out there. Now we look at some of the utility on the side of both of these teams. And saw a lot of plays with your nades earlier. To me, it's not going to have you know, those. It looks like everyone is really moved towards the middle of search and destroy what they want to go with. Stay without here. The feeling process is over. And now both of these teams trying to pick up some more rounds on the board. And Slack almost comes out with one of those kills. But he's found himself at the end of a 1v2. Lucky for him, he knows where both team envious players are. It's a 1v2 for him. Apathy starting off with two kills. That was a double kill coming out of him. He's also got some utility in his favor with that special stability. John is well on his way to his as well. And it looks like Slack is, in, is about halfway there with his kinetic armor. So we could see, depending on the way that Envious allocates this recourse, these resources, the next two rounds could go to them as well and they could close out the game. So you think in a situation like this, you have to force these in not 2v1, but you got to sort of switch them to 1v1s, and it looks like they will converge on the bomb here as it's going down. Apathy's going to be the first one around the corner, and just like that, Slack spotted, taken out, and that's a really smart play on the side of Team Envious, right? They just drop back, wait. As soon as they spot him, the call comes in, they move in, Slack didn't know it at all, tried to get the bomb down, and Apathy just comes up behind him. Yeah. Being heavily outnumbered again, not too much to work with in that situation. Apathy ending that round with three kills in a row and making it to see the next one. He's now He is now the highest scoring player on the team, pushing Slasher down to second place. And we're seeing two abilities already primed and two more just far, just close enough to they might as well be active. One player just in the same spot. That's going to be Slack. It looks like a very similar positioning as we've seen before, oh except Looney is closer, my. and he finds himself a frag. He's got to have one more in that arsenal from his danger close class. J-Cap finds one, 
trying to connect with the second, but Classic and Slack double team him and take him down. Rise Nation answers right back. Looney's opening double kill was huge for them right there. The grenade takes out two, and from there the collapse comes in. And look at this. We always talk about setting up effective crossfire. This was absolutely beautiful. I believe Slack was the first one to sort of start that engagement. Backs up teammate comes out and when that engagement starts he pokes out again just to secure the kill in their favor now rise nation only one round away from tying this one at four apiece john has the sniper out once again i'm gonna see what he can do on the defense for the offense i'm gonna have slack highlighted important to note there that slack sitting inside mansion was running hardwire didn't want to give away any cheap information to an emp the players will not get any in a, a hit marker for trying to spot check that I'd be curious to see if any of the players from Envious that decide to play in the mansion do the same thing, but it looks like a lot of them are playing back. Rise Nation, of course, can't see through walls like us and, and does not have the ability to know that. So they're going to be playing their corners, making a little bit of noise, trying to bait people out. Nothing coming from it. And we're going to see three Rise Nation players working their way through mansion. And all of them swarming top bedroom and lab. Apathy has to be communicating this to his team. He doesn't want to get too aggressive and get taken down, though. Yeah, right now, this is... Very strong push coming out of their side, right? A thing that helps them, John set up here just looking over that B bomb area, and Jacob's gonna be the first one to strike. Not following up just yet, but after his attention has been drawn, and he's now on the map, him and John getting work done. Jacob finds himself on the wrong side, but Apathy cleans it up all four down. Envy one round away from securing game two. And here it is Apathy opting to actually go with the submachine gun more often on this map. That's gonna be because he's playing Mansion a whole lot more than a lot of his other teammates. On maps like Infection, you can see him pull out the AR, but he's doing work with the submachine gun currently on this map. Currently 9-4, and four, hitting that defuse. Actually might have missed his progress towards score streaks, but he does still have the active, the heat wave ability primed and ready. And opts not to use it here in this gunfight against Octane. He knew he was going to take it. So what does Rise Nation have to do to work their way back and go up to on the series? I, I really like the impact that Looney has had so far. I mean, he's only he's five and six, so it doesn't seem like he's doing a whole lot, but some of his kills have been very, very important, and some of his movement and nade placement for just finding information for the team has been important, so if they can keep playing off of that, that'd be great. Rise Nation, they need to get something, some kind of a pick going here on mid. I, I don't think they've gotten first blood too often. Oh, look at this. Looks like they want to try and play sneaking out classic inside a bunker, winning some sort of push and slasher. Not getting anything with the EMP. Classic still gonna hold that position. Oh. Check Classic's uh, perk set real quick. Side of Classic. Yeah, he's got hardwire, so he's not even getting uh, hit marker by those EMPs if they're even close enough. Now we do see they're making their way slowly towards the side. Looks like you get a hit marker. That's another one. Two grenades coming in, and now the bomb will start to go down. Classic will play spoiler, but immediately that kill is traded shots. Now being fired over inside of the mansion. John's going to follow up after his teammate Apathy was taken out. There it is, John playing from the table. Looney in a position that he's often found in on this map, in driveway in the corner with an SMG, just trying to play for information and then act accordingly. So he's able to win that engagement again. Playing for that information, he's able to find the trade onto John. Slasher left in a one versus two. He has access to the active camo. It, I don't think it would be a bad idea to try and use it here. This is definitely a winnable 1v2. He can get into a solid post plant position, but no, Looney catches him on the table again. Great read out of him. And I think he's going to give the defuse to Looney because he's closer to streaks. He has access to the HCXD. Rise Nation is definitely still in this. Glitch and Heat Wave in their arsenal as well. Definitely a very well played round out of Looney. And that's going to be a big thing for Rise to swing this game in their favor, right? They have a solid round there. Able to work their way back. Two rounds away, you think they have so much utility on the board, not only in their lethals and tacticals, but now their specialists are up and ready to use as well. And one thing I do want to see is what sort of impact the Kinetic Armor will possibly play if we go right. to around 11 or if it has to be used here. Let's see, they have Heat Wave, Active Camo. Kinetic Armor's almost up, so he, he can pick it up this round, but more likely it'll probably be safer in their round 11 situation. Meanwhile, Envy do have a lot of utility on their side as well. Glitch, yeah. Heat Wave, and Active Camo all on the board. And we're going to go for a little bit of a drive. Mooney will be the driver here with the HCXD. Yeah, and if you take a look at the score, do not be fooled. Rise Nation is just as much in this game as Envious is. They have lots of utility to work with. It just depends on how these teams utilize this sort of pseudo-economy system. The HCXD coming in, Looney just trying to play for information. They could shoot, though. It's way out in the open. There it is. Great response. 
Not too much given away from Envious, but Slack is going to find the bomb plant on the A site. That HDXD zoning them backwards. He has one kill until he can get his kinetic armor, and then all four players from Rise Nation will be lit up gold on their scoreboard. Yeah, the point of that one was to just keep to get control of the site. Now Classic tagged up, has to use the active camel Great spots. One, one more around the corner, won't be able to do it. Slack now the only hope, doesn't have the kinetic armor yet, but if he picks up this kill Ooh. on John, he might be able to make something work, and John cleans it up with the pistol. Envious works their way back. A great game number two from them. 6-4 will be your final score, and now the series tied up at one apiece. Yeah, Envious there, re really relying on Apathy's skill inside Mansion, finding so many kills with that SMG. I think he had, what, maybe at least three or four double kills with the SMG in and around Mansion, right? Oh, man. He had to. He did absolutely great things that map. And look at that. The final play on there. The glitch comes in. The pistol secures it. Just like that, we are set up for uplink on infection between these two teams. And... Remember, just a little bit of flashback to stage two playoffs. Infection uplink went in the favor of Team Envious, but they only won that one by two points. Nine to seven was the final score. Looking at the scoreboard here, JCap designated bomb carrier having the lowest score of four and eight, but he didn't need to do too much when Apathy had all the kills in his arsenal. Double, more than actually tripling his score pretty much uh, at 11 and five with a 1500 score. Certainly a huge impact for this game on the other side of the things though. You gotta look at how much Looney was doing in Mansion. Even situations where he wasn't getting kills, he was playing very intelligently and coordinated with his team, finding information. And it was great teamwork on both sides. I think just in the end, it came down to efficient specialist usage from Envious and Apathy just being unstoppable. And you speak of specialist, that's gonna be something we have to watch out for in this upcoming game number three as well. You think setting up spawn traps on infection. If you have a scythe or a tempest and you're in a position, let's say you're going towards that back grandma's area, right? And you're set up on the tank. You're able to take out players left and right as they're coming up off of the spawn, going towards that uplink, trying to get control of the base. And you set up there, you get the forward pass into grandma's and then that's more points on the board. Yeah, moving right into this uplink. I Rise Nation, I, I feel they've had uh, some issues lately with Octane, and usually what put what put Octane is sort of a high impact player in this matchup on this map, and um, you know with the, the slump, sort of a slump that he's been in lately with less time being spent in game, a little bit of frustration coming from his teammates. I kind of want to give the upper hand to Envious, Rise Nation, where they used to be just the best uplink team for some time in Stage One. I think that Envious at the moment is just stronger in this game mode, maybe more consistent. Mm -hmm. um, but I think statistically this might be a very good uplink map for... I think they're both around, sort of, they both look good on this map when I checked, I believe. Yeah. Not by like too much, we're not talking like double positive or anything, but like, you know, one, two in their favor throughout all of stage two. Yeah, I mean, they have a, throughout stage two, at least online, we're talking about online uh, yeah. stats here, they had a, a pretty 50-50 map yeah. pool. They had two standout maps in this game mode in Uplink, mm -hmm. which was Fringe and Evac. I think they're five and zero oh in Evac yeah. Uplink. And then, they look uh, absolutely. And then this beautiful. weekend alone, yeah, they've been great on it. They, I think they stomped oh, yeah. Call pretty heavily. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Flashbacks to that one. And that uh, Fringe they, Uplink was four one. Their four one record. I believe they again in that series against Complexity, they went up like ten to nothing at the yeah. end of the first half or something like that. I think the final score was like twenty to three. Yeah. Other than I those two, say, so. other than those two maps, though. Uh, they got a pretty 50-50 map pool for if you're just looking at stage two online. On land, though, Rise certainly a top contender, and they can do huge things. We've seen in stage one playoffs on land just how much Slack can bring to the table. He can sometimes just show up to be the best player in the lobby despite who he's facing against, and that could be a huge part of the pressure, the objective pressure that you need in a game mode like Uplink. Thinking back a little to that sort of series against complexity on the side of rise nation one thing they did really well in uplink and something we praise time and time again when it comes to uplink is rotating the satellite drone right the pushes that you would make on the map even on the sort of bad side as we will refer to it sometimes being able to put up as many points as possible on that side and it seems like people are starting to actually have discussions like okay the bad side on evac isn't as bad after all and then when you see some head-to-head -head matchups, you know, being able to rotate that drone, especially on a least preferred side, you're wasting time, right? Where yeah. your opponent can pick up point after point. That helps you in the long run. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a bad side. It's just less favored exactly. because it takes 
it takes more to set up your, an yeah. effective your shot. enemy is less likely to make mm -hmm. like that fatal mistake to let you do it is exactly. essentially what makes it the less favorite side it's definitely not the bad side isn't oh no they're not gonna it's score not, yeah, oh it's man not like, oh, their man, only is objective terrible. is to waste time no there's certainly opportunities you can take it's just when you switch sides you're gonna find that more often than not it's a lot easier to take advantage of that so looking at the bracket here again of course we have the optic gaming elevate matchup here a bit of a rematch coming from a uh, MLG Anaheim in the Grand Finals where it went all the way to a Game 5 and Optic Gaming was still able to come out victorious, but Elevate showed that they are just a very different team when it comes to land play oh, man. online. They're very shaky, but on land, they can just especially get a lot out of a player like Felony. He's Ele so consistent, just Elevate's stoic. Elevate looks so good. I'm thinking last night, Facento with probably one of the best uses of Glitch of the entire year with that and now once again just like the first respawn the tempest and the hvk taken off the board now i'm wondering since this is infection the tempest gone do you go for the scythe in the band of protects too or does this one play by the book i i don't really see a reason to ban the scythe through the tempest is just that's just something that rise wants to get out of the way that's yeah. fine they don't mind they don't want to play against the tempest and but they don't mind playing against the scythe one thing they need to look out for, though, is Slasher has a pretty decent scythe, so exactly. that could come into play when it comes to spawn trapping. However, I think that that's going to be slightly less dangerous than Tempest, which has seen a little bit more play uh, in terms of weapon choice here. But going through the Banner Protects, we saw the HVK and the Shiva also get taken. I think that was Envious that took it. They don't want to see Octane running that at all. Um, the HVK, of course, out of the game. I think the Man of War made it through, unless I missed it. I believe so, it made it through, And though. that's what I'm s I was sort of playing towards, right, bringing up the scythe. It's like... The Tempest, thinking about it, you have so much more mobility, right? You're able to get into that swan trap position with the Tempest very fast and then hold that position the side. It'll take you a little bit longer, and especially when we think of some of the things you need to be able to do on this map, mobility can play a huge problem, especially when you're trying to take control of in search and Troy, what we call the B Street, sort of that snow side of the map of the rocks. So you have the top rock here, and then you have the sandbags overlooking the middle of the map. That's going to be a position that will be fought for throughout the entire 10 minutes here because you have that, the statue is right in front of you. On the other side of that, you have the satellite drone. You need to keep that position if you want to make sure that possession goes in your favor. Overdrive getting banned out. So you can expect to see the big three on both sides, and that's exactly what you're looking at. We also see the scythe. So we got a mirror matchup in the specialist draft. Should see also a very similar matchup when it comes to weapon choices. Lots of players opting to run assault rifles on infection. Um, but of course, those aggressive submachine gun players, you cannot downplay that role. That's the kind of pressure that you need when it comes to holding down a spawn trap, getting someone to just escort the drone carrier, of course, to even get in the base to get to that point. John running heat wave, nothing too out of the ordin ordinary there. And it's looking like pretty standard right. match here, except for, I mean, we saw the HVK ban in the ban and protect, but that's becoming more and more common. And we also saw that in the hard point as well. So I don't think we're going to see that in any of the respawns in this series. And the Tempest. Something else we'll also have to watch out for here, and we haven't had to bring it up too much throughout the weekend, one-point throws, right? They can make a huge difference in uplink and on infection where sometimes the push really doesn't go in your favor. You either get stopped sort of in the alleyway between Broken and Grandmounds or all, even sometimes at the back by the tank and on the other side you can get stopped back church and get stopped in the grave as well. You have to settle for those one point tosses. You need to make sure you practice and set up and can make them sometimes in high pressure situations. Sometimes you do have a player shooting at you when you're trying to go for the one point toss. So all your focus isn't on that necessarily, but it needs to be. Yeah, for sure. But we look at this, uh, we mentioned something, Paradox, for this matchup yep. started about the possibility of fatigue setting in on Envious, and yep. at least so far in the series, even with everyone kind of just waking up within a few hours ago, including us, uh, Envious does not look, if, if it's setting in, it's not incredibly noticeable, right? Like they're not getting blown out by any means. They're having a close, intense series against a, a team that should keep it that competitive. And getting into this uplink here, I don't see anyone underperforming. I don't, I don't see anyone that needs to pick it up from the last two maps or anything like that. I see everyone contributing. Yeah. And now we have two rounds of uplink on infection, and one of these teams will take the lead in the series and move closer towards playing in the losers bracket finals, and then if they can win their the grand finals Apathy as is well. Apathy's running a frag and a smoke. I'm interested to see where he places that. I'd imagine it'd be somewhere around mid. Um, but I want to see if trophy systems interrupt something like that. Top on board with Team Envious as this match is now underway. 
And of course, infection. Gonna see a lot of snow on the map in the next few minutes. And look at this. I like the split push coming out of the start of Rise. You can see two towards broken. Great nade. Apathy gets the nade to start things off. You see the smoke. I mean, Pop spots oh. one and Slack cuts him down. He didn't wait for it to bloom. He gets, gets through and Slack finds him just before it's in his face. Getting that second kill there is going to be big for Slack to release some of the pressure as J-Cap and John are able to connect with another two kills. But Looney and Classic still staying alive on mid-map, trying to maintain that control. However, that's going to be Slasher's AR that puts him down. Led by Apathy, this could be a solid push from them. They need to get that graveyard control, though, because Slack and Classic aren't going to make it easy. Classic's wall run, finding that height advantage and taking down Slasher. And here we go. This is what we talked about a little bit, just being able to rotate the satellite drone around the map. When the push sort of falls through, uh, I'm just gonna go for the oh, no, reset okay. on that one. Yeah, you that was a good now, play. Yeah, they have John set up here, trying to push over towards Grave. He ends up falling. Jcap though, is in a position. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Those one point tosses. Sometimes you do have players shooting at you. When it's that many, you expect to go down pretty fast. Almost gets the throw off, but just not enough. Is Rise Nation gonna try and answer? Looks like it was going to be a great setup for a play there. After throwing the drone off the map after getting three dead, so the drone spawns right in front of his team and they can run it straight through. However, they weren't able to capitalize on it. No one was able to get through Grave in, in time and, and connect with a good one-point play. So we're still going to be tied up 0-0. Zero, zero. Drone in control of NBS as the rise. I think it was Looney that threw it into his hands to try and win the engagement. Slash is going to get the better of him anyway. After they pushing up through mid with the AR in his hands, is going to grab the drone now as it looks like all of Rise is spawning up towards the B Street side with J-Cap sitting inside Graveyard and blocking spawns. Good cap, picks up one, spots one around the corner, needs to connect. There we go. Connection comes in. Apathy, one point toss up and over the church. It drops right in. Envy going to take the lead. So the second push ends up working out in their favor. They're still threatening here in Grave as well. As Slash was able to take out Classic, doesn't get it done on the second engagement though. But look at Apathy, look at trying to throw the nade. <laughs> that picks up one. Octane's inside as well. He falls. Apathy's set up in a perfect position, the high oh wall Oh my run. goodness, if he Not connects goodness. with all those shots, that would have been so huge for John trying to get control here and setting and upsetting spawns. J-Cap would have been right behind him for the drone play. It could have been in a colossal play out of Apathy, but still, Rise Nation responding very well. Still sitting inside Grave, making things difficult. J-Cap trying to get some vision. He still has access to the camo. This could be a camo play here, and they can push through, but so many Rise Nation players to run through, it's not going to be easy. J-Cap and John finding two kills. Apathy behind them with the drone. If he gets this score here, he's going to be well on his way to his kinetic armor, and John is just a moment away from that heat wave as well. One point play connecting, catching a kill, but we see all of Rise Nation responding with four of their own. That's Three. good. They keep control of the base, and now they can establish a presence in the middle of the map once again, right? But Luminous heavily tagged up here in Broken. J-Cap will be able to win that gunfight. And this is what was going to see time and time again in the middle of the two teams going back and forth. And now Rise going to start another push. Classic will be the leader of this satellite drone and looks like he does have this lead blocker and Octane in front of him. Octane falls with the active camo going to play a huge part here. Please make sure you can get a little bit closer before this runs out. Easy one point toss, rise on the board. Great use of the camo there from Classic. He knows he can't go for the one point play because MBS is set up for the intercession and the interception. Instead, he uses cover and camo to just get closer for at least the one point play and makes the most of the situation. Now, Rise Nation trying to maintain mid map control. It's going to get shut down as JCap takes down Octane. And Apathy is on middle map with both an M8 and a VMP. He has plenty of options here for how he wants to move forward. And he knows these players have to sort of rotate over through Grave and be able to pick up the first one that does. JCap able to get up and in, so the three point lead now for Team Envious. And look at the middle of the map right now. Rise have three people over here that can make a huge impact. Looney, though, needs to be able to win the gunfight there. He ends up falling, so the push will be stopped. Classic pushed up alongside Slack on middle map. I'm not sure what weapon Slack has at the moment. I would imagine it's an SMG, but Classic is far ahead of him and is able to get the first engagement, not winning against JCap, though. M8 in his hands. He doesn't even have to worry about J-Cap because Looney's there with the SMG. Now trying to move up. He has access to the kinetic armor. Doesn't want to waste it, though. Trying to turn and burn on Apathy, but Slasher's there to catch him from inside B bomb site. So, Looney trying to stay alive over in green. Meanwhile, Apathy's found himself tagged up in the middle of the map. Has Slasher here to work with him, and look at this. J-Cap once again. Looney now behind enemy lines. HBXD. Looney finally spotted and taken out. J-Cap's going to try and use this HCXD to open up some sort of push with less than 20 seconds remaining in the first half. The HCXD, independent the player with Flag Jack and on board with John, who does have this heat wave, can make a huge play here. He slides Boom. in. There we Some go. Point. 
gives him enough time to get the one point toss up and in. Will he be able to follow this up with the kill? No, Classic shuts him down at the end of the first half. The boys in blue up by four. That HCXD right there definitely led the way for that push with the drone. And then John followed up with a great use of the heat wave. HCXD making it through with the bin and protect is something that we've seen. We, of course, you see it often in Uplink, but throughout this weekend, it's been happening a lot that HCXD gets banned out in game modes like Uplink and CTF. But there, it's showing up in a big way, and you see why it's prioritized so highly. And we see the impact that HCXD can have not only in Uplink just now, but in the search and destroy as well, when it was able to open up a bomb site all on its own. And now, Rise have five minutes to answer right back and try and take this game number two on starting on board with Classic. This is JCAP all the way over the map, but will not be able to connect. JCAP, though, spots his teammate, spots him as well that's going to be two in a row for the advanced warfare champion all right a sneeze and i blacked out for a second and i come back to see jcap open up with a two-piece and drone control running it straight down mid this man is currently double positive at 19 and 8 on a two streak he needs a front line though some sort of an escort no he doesn't the melee comes in waits just a little too long and isn't able to find the one point play but that's fine slasher makes an even better situation of that he has access to full streaks and the scythe octane though and slasher are able to oh. put him in the sights octane falling off the map is not going to be good because Envious is already setting up for their next push. And you see John's going to be the lead blocker here. Perfect position now. Slack high in the sky goes down. You see the drone leaving the hand. And the long one point toss goes in. And look at the position from JCAP once again behind enemy lines. Doesn't spot the turns around just a little too late and will be punished for that. Meanwhile, Avadi set up in grave waiting for the push from Rise to come in. And this is perfect. The kinetic armor. Yeah. We'll make sure he keeps control here as much as he can and both kills going in his favor. The pass backwards and a setup for the push on the side of Envy. Yeah, Apathy knew he needed to activate the kinetic armor there to get the players out of his grave area. Luckily for him, we Envious also found two other kills to completely clear out the middle of the map and set up for a push here. The camo is going to come into play now. Jcap being a huge part of this game so far is able to find a dunk and stay in position. If you can win this gunfight, that's huge. Don't worry about it though. Slash is there. Finds two. Thank you very much. Rise Nation though is not letting any sort of a relay happen. It's currently a two versus two situation oh in the base. My. One player goes down for Envious, but after he's going huge, the slasher, Scythe comes out and he's holding down middle map. He's also working on some more streaks. The lightning Strike and HCXD still in his arsenal. Looney and Classic are able to answer to that. And Jacob's had a huge game so far, right? He's double positive. 10 and, or 20 and now 11. I was gonna say he only has 10 deaths to the 20 kills, but Slasher now, we're gonna see the HCXD come into effect once again and take some of the kills. So that's two down on the side of Rise, and we have complete control of the middle of the map. They just need to get past two more players. Classic goes down, Slack and Octane gonna be the back line here for Rise Nation. The Man of War makes it through, picks up two, stops the drone progress. That's three down on Envy, makes that four. Shakeout falls as well. Slack is able to find two. Pretty simple pick up there with the Man of War. Now we're seeing a 2-2 split across the middle and bottom lane on the map here. Of course, you're gonna see people prioritizing the graveyard area and Slack's wall right, right there is able to find him two kills and open up an opportunity for Rise to score. But I think they're afraid of the interception. They're trying to wait it out, get some more kills. And here it is, Slack is able to get closer after a few more kills and that's a one point play for Rise. But they still have a pretty long way to go with two minutes left in the game. And with Octane falling right there, they have to set up for another push all over again and they have less than two minutes to do it and they're down by six. Now Looney's gonna try and open things up, only picks up one, his teammates falling as well. Control the drone, we'll go back over towards Envy and this is the second time or possibly the third time we've seen them do this. Take this route all the way around the map. Oh, I just gonna wait, that's all they have to do. They just have to waste time, right? And look at that, that's perfect. The lightning strike takes out three, takes out both HCXDs. Octane's behind them, but he can't take out anyone. And honestly, in a position like this, they can hold the drone here for as long as they want and they're just gonna go for the points. Or they can continue to bury Rise Nation in the score, putting that dunk in, scores 12-4. After he's gonna wrap back over to middle map. He's got streaks, HCXD in his hands, John. Soon to be heat waving people. And Apathy finds yet another kill, a submachine gun. Proven to be a nuisance this entire series so far. He's on a four streak. 14 and 15, but he hasn't had to do, do so much when it comes to slam because of what Jake has been doing, being nearly double positive for a lot of the game, as well as involving himself in the objective. Now, Apathy with the Man of War is gonna try and set up for kind of a spawn trap here. ATFD comes in, shot instantly, but that's fine. Dying out of the base, but with 50 seconds left, that's pretty much the end of the game. Another Slasher calling in streaks, it's just, it doesn't matter at this point. Looney does have control of the drone on the side of rise, 40 seconds left. He's gonna try and get the one point toss. 
But the drone falls out of his hands just a little bit short. Apathy's gonna have that one, and you see they're just gonna try and waste as much time as possible. Rise has to come towards them, and he doesn't have to do a thing. I love this lower wall run as well. He's gonna kill time and time again. As soon as he's taken out, you know, the drone falls off the map, and Apathy's like, you know, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna activate the kinetic armor after I throw the drone off the map, pick up two more. We have a lead blocker here who was able to pick up a kill. That slasher, he's immediately traded. Jcap gonna have control, control Rise's base over to Envy as well. This is another point on the board. 15 for your final score. There's a junk dunk. Jcap doing what he's been doing all game, finding kills and staying alive in the base. Three carries, two throws. This man was just on fire. 15 to four. Envy go up two to one in this series. And you know, looking at that. I thought we were going to be a little closer in this game. I mean, the last time we saw these two teams match up on this map on land, it was separated by two points, right? This one far from an Envy looking very dominant in that upland game. Yeah, and I mentioned uh, Rise Nation usually, like if you asked me maybe a month or two, yeah, maybe two, three months ago, I would have said, yeah, Rise Nation should win this upland. But Envious is just looking like they have a much hotter hand in this game mode and Rise Nation on a bit of a slump in comparison to what they've been able to do in the past. And this is really bad on the side of Rise because you're getting ready to go against the best capture the flag team in all of Black Ops 3. Yeah, uh, Envious and Splice uh, over in Euro the European Call of Duty World League are pretty far ahead of a lot of other teams when it comes to that game mode stats wise. So looking at this, it will be played on fringe and we're gonna give a lot of attention towards the assault rifle players once again, Octane and Slasher being the case, but thank you for joining us on the Bravo stream so far, of course. Currently in the middle of our 10 a.m. matchup. This is the loser's round five between Rise Nation and Team Envious. Loser of this goes home. Unfortunately, your vacation here in Orlando actually begins, of course, because yeah, you guys that's have been the silver lining, right? Weekend, <laughs> right? But I mean, the silver lining is more. I want to keep playing. Of course, there's a lot of money still up for grabs, and there you see the bracket on your screen. And what do you like so far over on that left side of the bracket? Uh, well, lo it's looking like it's the exact same as what we saw um, saw, saw earlier here. It looks like Optic Gaming. Of course, 3 2 in Rise Nation earlier on. Elevate, 3 0 in Luminosity Gaming. That is a series that I want to go back and watch. I was unable to see that one. I had to. I only watched the first map, I believe, and we saw Felony going pretty big on the EVAC hardpoint. Um, and. I, had, I was going to watch the Infused LG matchup because LG is, of course, over the last couple of tournaments, they've been pretty hot. But. Uh, if we get over into this series that we're heading into now where Band and Protects are starting up and we're getting in the fringe CTF, I think that we see more of the same, the HVK, HVK band and the Tempest, Tempest band that's been gone from both of the respawn game modes, or all, both of the respawn game modes but, uh, so far, and now it's gone again in the third one, that's CTF. So I don't think we're going to see a Man of War ban here. If it didn't come in the first two, it should not come here. High Caliber's gone as well. Shiva going to be taken out here. So already two weapons and a specialist off the board for this matchup in Capture the Flag. You talk about the HVK and the Tempest time and time again. Seems to be going back and forth between these two teams in this series. And you think Rise Nation had a very close series with Optic Gaming yesterday. They had the 2-0 lead. The first sweep comes in. It looked like they were composed and ready to go today. They looked good in game number one as well, although that one is close. It's about a 20-point win on the side of Team Envious, but that last map is one they need to just move on from. Rapid Fire stuff. makes it through. Yeah, you're So correct. Shiva's gone. Rapid Fire makes it through. If these teams do opt to use it, we could see the Pharaoh come into play. That could be a huge part of this game, especially after the VMP nerfs the Pharaoh. Uh, one of the downsides is that it's a burst weapon, but when you put that Rapid Fire on it, just that fire rate makes it so, so worth it. You can run through that magazine so much faster. Um, a lot of the abilities made it through except Overdrive, of course. That's the usual sus suspect when it comes to these respawn game modes. Now, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Rapid Fire made it in when we saw Rise versus Optic yesterday in that game number one that Rise was able to take, and Optic immediately sort of got rid of that going forward in the series. Yeah, I mean, Rise in the past, they, they haven't entirely... Of course, they ban Rapid Fire most yeah. of the time. But they're one of those teams that that specific attachment is something that they can often let slip through. They just didn't want to play with flashes and concussions more, so they allocated two bands towards mm -hmm. that. And we've seen a good amount of the Pharaoh so far this weekend, too. 
So Who other than uh, Fizzer, I've, I've, seen, I've seen Fizzer run it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've seen that. There are teams in the open bracket as well. So there are people in the venue using it. So I'm saying I'm not, I wouldn't mm. be surprised if we do see that come out. I talked out. to Felony about it yesterday, and he said he yeah. really likes the weapon. He said see? people are kind of sleeping on it um, at, at the moment. Of course, people are going to favor the VMP because they have so mm. many hours put into and that weapon, and it's still a great weapon. You get to this position, you say, hey, this is something that people don't seem to be using effectively. I know how to use it. I'm practiced with it. Right. Let's pull it out. It'll throw the other team off guard, maybe. And we can use that to our advantage. We've got to remember, though, the VMP, still a very good SMG, oh, yeah. even with rapid Absolutely. fire on it. It's something that's very commonly used. But what we haven't seen much of is after the recoil stability nerf, exactly how much players want to still use rapid fire on it on land. So. Uh, we get another good taste of that this weekend. Of course, that has happened once or twice before throughout the weekend. But um, you could possibly see some Pharaoh play on a map like Fringe. We'll have to see how it goes, though, when these creative classes are finished. And, of course, the Tempest being banned out. The big three still in the game. So Scythe is the obvious choice. And then followed up by the three specialist abilities of Active Camo, Heat Wave, and Kinetic Armor Paradox. So looking at this, we think Capture the Flag, the Scythe, can play a huge part on a lot of the defensive plays you set up in the back of the map team has to push you try and get the flag you're able to make a huge impact you even need to count out two right that helps going in your favor and now game number three will be starting kinetic armor saves a lot of fly caps heat wave and active camo as well active camo a lot when you're going to actually grab the opponent's flag pop the active camo able to get away if you're going back to your own base you have two, three players chasing you, even one, sometimes you're able to use that to your advantage. Slide in, heat wave, get a cap on the board as well, but let's see what both of these ICR. teams are thinking going into game number four. Check and see what's on this ICR here. We're gonna see rapid fire. That's a, one of the downsides of the ICR is that slow fire rate as well as the damage. The rapid fire is certainly making up for it because of how accurate that weapon is. Expect Classic to make a pretty big difference with it. On the Man of War, we're also seeing a rapid fire. Are we seeing Anything on the side of uh, Envious with yep. this attachment? Rapid Inmate, fire. there it is. The VMP rapid also going to be running rapid fire. Yes, so they are still opting to go with the rapid fire on the VMP, even after the nerf. Of course, as we said, it's still an incredible weapon, and rapid fire just makes it that much better. And JCap had a huge game last time around, so I'm going to start on board with him. He's able to spot and take out Classic with E Slack. Following him up here, JCap's looking for the second one, won't be able to do it, but Looney's already worked his way over towards the Team Envious flag, and as soon as he gets his hands on it, he's taken out. Octane in position with the ICR, trying to stay alive in the base here and see if he can make a difference. Slacked as well over there in the barn. He's able to take out John, can't find the second kill on the JCap, but Octane is there and possibly can hit the trade. But he's got Apathy in front of him as well. Wins the gunfight with the headshot. Catches a couple of shots in the J-Cap, but the LKAR-9 is too much for him to answer to. The flag is being pulled by Looney after he trades the kill. Slasher, though, is able to drop Classic. There is one Envious player chasing just behind Looney who could stop this. But it looks like Looney's team is spawning up right in front of him. John might not know this. He has a lot more targets than he expected to deal with. The first flag cap goes in. Rise Nation is up 1-0, but John is still alive in the enemy base. Oh, no nope. for long. The HCXC the takes cars. him out. But look at this. Apathy is able to grab. The flag is all the way away. You think Slasher's in a perfect position to watch the cuts. Cuts off the middle of the map completely. Counter cap already comes in. We're tied at one apiece. Yeah, instant counter cap there. Uh, Rise Nation able to get a flag cap in despite class starting off the game 0 and 4 has to be noted. Apathy though, and the rest of that, Envious rather, the team effort to get the counter cap in immediately and answering right back. They have to try and exit out of their base now because Rise Nation is not letting up on the pressure. That's Looney just in front of them, and I think it was Slacked following it up, but J Cap and Apathy are able to answer to it. And Apathy is less than 300 now away from Scorch, 275. So he has the HCAC. Team Slasher was able to take out Octane. Of course, coming in once again from Team MVS. J Cap's going to be the one leading the charge spots, classic in the corner, but the crossfire too strong for them. Apathy's still alive in trains, and he's buying so much time here for John to get behind these players' spots. Octane takes him out, grabs the flag, and is now working his way back towards his teammates. Just one over at the L wall. He's going to be taken out. Apathy picks up the kill. That's the fourth streak. Trying to keep it going. Does fall. Slasher, though, was able to grab the flag, makes it all the way down. Trains J Cap is holding all of the Rise Nation players at bay, and that's another cap on the side of Team Envy. The distance that he put in between himself and Rise Nation with that long wall run on the right side of Train is going to be enough to put a second flag cap in here for Team Envious. One of the strongest CTF teams in the game. This is going to 
to be a tough comeback for Rise Nation if they want any hopes to stay in this series and bring it to a game five. Octane, though, in another position inside Junkyard. This is where we've seen him very often with the ICR, tacking up two players and then finishing the kill. Slasher, though, is still able to respond to him. Looney plays for the trade, but Apathy is going to catch him right in his back, and that looked like it should have been a flag pull opportunity coming from Rise Nation. You think they had all the tools in their favor, right? especially after the two pieces from Octane. I'm surprised that they weren't able to really convert and get the flag out of the base. And now, shots going down inside of the barn. Enemy holding onto their base so far in the John attack. Know he's there. Once again, Slasher's tagged up. They know he's here in the back of the map and hits the ground a little bit too much. There's Classics the Pharaoh. like, all right, I hear you take you out the push coming in once again they tried to get the flag out octane not successful there the push is on slack drops so it's going to be up to looney and classic to try and get things done so we're seeing the pharaoh with quick draw rapid fire stock not going to see too much use of it though a slasher still or excuse me jcap still able to sl shut him down after he knows there's someone just around the corner he's able to find the gunfight win there unfortunately for him earlier he wasn't able to stay alive on his streaks when last time he was in train but the htxd is going to give him a little bit of information as to what the rise base looks like players just around the corner trying to support the two pushing in john and slasher find kills octane though responding with one he's been pretty good about this so far and he's one more away from getting the scythe but the long range vmp shots from after is going to be enough to keep him at bay there's the double kill slack is down the flag cap looks like it's going in but classic and looney could pop no they're not close enough to stop it the smokes come out and they're not close enough because of the wall of cover but they are here for a counter cap looney stayed alive but the active counter pull. just to his right he goes down Great play by J-Cap on the side of Enemy. Meanwhile, John still has his heat wave as he's rotating to the back of the space player. Just to his right has spotted him from trapped him inside a barn, and that's going to be an easy kill for John most of the time. Meanwhile, Classic being sneaky, working his way all the way around the back. He's been spotted, especially now that he's taken out J-Cap. Looney, last hope for Rise. He's already pushed up. With less than 30 seconds here, he's going to try and work a little bit of magic, but one and then down. Octane holding it down on training in the last 15 seconds. It doesn't look like there's too many, too much of an opportunity for, oh no, Slack just opened that window of opportunity right away. If the rest of Rise Nation could have already been in the base, that could have been a flag pull, but with five seconds left, we're going into the second half with three, with the score being three to one. Envy looking good to take the series here. We've talked about it time and time again. Rise Nation has looked so good throughout all of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And on the other side, you have a team in the squad. We're able to win the last main event, that one being Call of Duty World League Stage 2 playoffs. And they are the best catch of the flag team in the game. And looking at this right now, I like sort of the aggression that we're seeing coming out of Rise, but sometimes they're getting these two downs, three downs, and they're not able to convert that into a flag for one in the capital group. JCap running it straight down train. That's often his opening execution on Fringe for really any respawn game mode. He's gonna toss some utility down to get some information, but he's not gonna get much from it. What he will get is packed up and his teammate dead. Slackton Classic finding two kills. Slasher is able to find one on Octane, but Slackton Slacked is able to stay alive and find another for himself. And now we're finally seeing the Slack and Slasher battle. Who's going to come out on top? It's Slasher opening the round with four kills, holding it down for his team despite everyone losing gunfights. As soon as Octane tries to peek the middle of the map, he's taken out very fast. And Slasher on the five streak on top and ball with him. Make six, that man. six in a row. He's 100 away from getting some more utility on his side. Big spot player in the middle of the map. And this flag will go all the way down the train tracks as Slack. The only one here will be in the streak. Oh. Tries to come up around and there we go slasher streak has now ended and slack and company are going to try and get this flag pull but once again looney goes down it's up to octane here picks that up and the flag will now be pulled out by rise nation this is a huge play and oh the sight like came that, out slasher responds with the sight yeah slasher hitting the you know the quickest choke point he could have had to hold uh, with this scythe versus this flag is going to be able to stop it. Now he's finding another Rise Nation player at the end of train. Catches him with the scythe, but Looney's positioning forces Slasher to get closer for the kill. And he baits it out for his teammates, so they're able to respond but with the shutdown. Pushing through train, Rise Nation is hoping for another opportunity to pull the flag, but with all of Rise Nation alive and in their base, and John getting a three-piece, that's not going to be easy. Looney on mid-map with a frag and a smoke, hoping to make something happen. All right, let's see what John's able to do. 100 away from the lightning strike. I believe, unless he's already used that HCXD, he is on the streets out of himself. Able to pick up one more, so all right. It's just moving closer and closer, so that's two HCXDs now. Slack you see, it's going to be trying to push down the train tracks. This HCXD will go 
and chase some of these off John spots classic in the middle of the map. Looks like he's gonna go for the challenge. Almost picks that one up. Unfortunately, it's taken out. On the side of enemy, it just seems like time and time again, when they, they need, need to go huge right now. in their base, Apathy just shows up. That's gonna be there it is. two and an assist. They needed Apathy in that moment. So many players were dying, but Apathy was still able to find one kill, pop the kinetic and go for the second, giving his teammates some time to spawn, and then hopefully get a push afterwards. And it's looking like that's exactly what the plan is. Apathy staying alive. Four streak for this man alive around barn. Three players down for Rise Nation. This could be a flag cap, but I, a flag pull. But I think that by the time they get to the flag, all of Rise Nation will be up. And that seems to be the case. The flag still gets pulled through barn anyway. Slash is in a position to try and defend it. But no, it's going to be stopped. The Rise, play, Rise Nation players were just too close. All right, two minutes left. Octane on a three streak. Let's hop forward with him. Pretty much knows John's there in the back of the map. You see Classic pushing in with the active camo. Will be spotted. Taken out by the HCXD, Octane's gonna connect with one. John still in the back oh, of the map. Oh, you need him alive here, look at his streaks. Gunfight. Oh man, and still alive, there we go. Now he has the scythe trying to go oh. up against John. John's gonna play spoiler in that one, but he has another player for Rise coming up trying to take him out. Unfortunately, Classic is preoccupied trying to take out one, and he's spotted and taken out by John. Looney's still alive. The last man alive in the last wave of respawns. Class 9 and 20 right now. Not contributing a whole lot even when he is off spawn. One player on the end of train. That's going to be Apathy. Waiting for someone to run right by. Catches Looney. Octane for the trade though. That's the scythe. So now he can call it out to his team. But Classic is in position for the spawn trap. This could be a flag pull if the rest of Rise Nation can play it right. But Classic was forced to go out of position. Now he's doubling back but there's no one home. Go. Classic trying to hold the line as Slack has made his way all the way down the map. Looks like Jcap trying to play Whoa. spoiler oh, no. here. There we go. Jcap goes for the pull instead of killing Slack and pays for it. Rise Nation's able to put a second flag on the board. 45 seconds remain, Paradox. Didn't they get these last two caps to force overtime? Right now, with Slack going down from Slasher, it's going to be very difficult. You see that NVS setup in the back of the map. Let's move over there. Classic. Eyes are on you as you're trying to take out one in the back of the map. Able to pick up the kill over in Globe. One more around the corner. Apathy just turns around. Of course, he's weak and then just takes him out. So that's going to leave two on this push. And with less than 20 seconds left, Apathy's going to activate the kinetic armor. Once again, he's been so strong. Making plays with it time and time again. And unfortunately for the Enterprise Nation, your tournament life ends here. Envious able to take this series 3-1, ending it on one of their best game modes. A lot of their victories are 3-0. They have that sick 3-0 potential, but even more so, they have the 3-1 potential, even if you're able to take one of those maps, and what's showing here for sure, they were just the more well-coordinated uh, CTF team. They were able to make the most out of the situation. Classic, of course, on the other side, having a, a, a map that's very out of his characteristic, or out of his... Uh, out of the norm for him. Yeah. You know, he's, he's not usually going to be someone that starts off 0 and 5, goes double negative for some time, and then isn't really able to be a very high impact player. He's easily, look at the score, it's his score per minute, incredibly low. That's definitely not something from him, but, well, it is now not something normally from him, we should say, and that's going to be the end of the series for Envious. Jcap, a huge part of this team's success throughout oh, the yeah. series. Apathy more so in this map, though. Yeah, in this map, Apathy went absolutely huge, and then you think he had huge games from Slasher and Jcap before John doing so much objective work in game number one as well. And, of course, they didn't get the win in that game number one. But the 6-4 goes in their favor on Stronghold. The 15-4 in Infection CTF and now, or Infection Uplink, and now the CTF goes in their favor as well. The boys in blue moving on, and how do you think they stack up against the winner of Phase Luminosity? I'd say they're still one of the best teams in the game. And in a matchup against Phase Luminosity, like I said, it's going to be intense. It's going to be close, but <clears throat> Envious has shown on multiple different occasions that they can even beat the best teams, or they have a chance to beat some of the other best teams. So I think they stack up pretty well. It's definitely not a mismatch in any sense. I just want to look more at what the maps are and how the how the previous results from those two teams go. But guys, that's going to do it for us on this series. I'm Fox, joined by Paradox. MBS is going to win 3-1 against Rise Nation. Thank you very much for tuning in. We have one more match coming up on Bravo. Make sure you stay tuned.